Hi everybody, it's Julie and in this newsletter I'm going to be sharing a technique for foiling your rubber stamped images that I have been having some success with. When my sweet friend Jennifer McGuire announced that she had figured out a way to use heat embossing to foil her stamped images, I was all over that like white on rice. I pulled out an old laminator I've had for like 15 years, it's just a little six inch machine, and I grabbed two rolls of foil and I went to town. But I tell you, that machine's old, it's only got one temperature setting, and no matter what I tried, I could not make the technique work. And I don't know if it was the brand of fine detail embossing powder or if it was <laughs> my machine or whatever, but I tried everything. Then I got the Royal Sovereign, the nine inch machine, because I thought, you know, maybe I just need a better machine, a bigger machine, and uh, one that has more pressure and more, um, you know, control. So it's got two temperature settings on the Royal Sovereign, but despite the different brands of detail, fine grind, clear embossing powder, and sticky embossing powder, I still got smooshed results. I tried changing my carrier sheet, making it thinner, making it thicker, making no carrier sheet, but no matter what I tried, despite all the troubleshooting suggestions there are out there, there. I couldn't make it work. So then I remembered that I have this glue that I used for gilding flakes and it's called Cosmic Shimmer Flake and Glitter Glue. And the cool thing about this glue is that it dries clear and it dries very tacky and sticky. So I grabbed an ink blending tool. This is the foam um, on the ink blending tool. And then I just applied that glue directly out of the nozzle there onto the foam and spread it out nice and made an even coating there on the foam. And I'm going to put some scratch paper underneath my project because I really do not want to get this stuff on my work surface or on that cushion that um, I have underneath my project. That's just so I get clean impressions. But if you get that glue on there, it's going to be a pain to get it off. So anyway, I do need to reapply the glue with each impression so that I get a nice, even, equal coating every time I impress the stamp. And this stuff is super sticky. So um, if you get it on your fingers, you do want to be careful you don't transfer it elsewhere to your project. And let me tell you, I mean, if you have a dog or a cat in your house, you really do not want to get any of animal hair on it because I'm telling you, your cat walks by, this is going to stick to your cat. <laughs> so just a word to the wise, you know, watch out for that. You don't want lint drifting down on this. But anyway, after I was all done um, making my impressions, I set it aside to dry and I went and washed my stamp because you want to get that glue washed off the stamp and the acrylic block immediately after you're done using. If it dries on there, you know, it's on there for an extended period of time, it, you're going to have a heck of time getting it cleaned off. So anyway, by the time I got done washing and patting dry my stamp and my block and everything, came back, the glue was all nice and dry, so I made a carrier sheet out of standard 20 pound copy paper, and then because I said, you know, this glue dries tacky and sticky, your foil is going to stick to it, so you just smooth it out nice and flat with the pretty side up, of course, and then you're going to sandwich it in, in there. Um, and then I flipped the carrier sheet over because I found that I got better results with the foil down on the bottom and the cardstock up. And then I rotated it. What is it? Is it 90 degrees or is it 45 degrees? Anyway, I sent it through. Um, I just kind of rotated and sent it through one direction and then the other. So fold side first and then the long side went in to the machine. So I got two impressions there through the laminator. Now, is it perfect? Nope, but I have yet to find a foolproof perfect method for foiling stamped images. So I just took my quickie glue pen. There were a couple of spots that I needed to touch up and I let the quickie glue pen dry. It goes on blue, but it dries clear and it also dries tacky. So then I could take a scrap of leftover foil from an, uh, other repeated attempts. Like I said, I spent days trying to figure out why I couldn't make the heat embossing thing work. So anyway, I'm interested to see how well this will work with the Mink 6-inch um, machine by Heidi Swap because it has multiple temperature controls. And yes, I did try it without a laminator at all, and it did work somewhat, but I felt I got better coverage and even pressure using the laminator than just doing it with my fingertips and burnishing it that way. I also tried it on that Stampendous Butterfly. It turned out wonderful. So please go check out more still shots and more details and notes that I made at the In Touch newsletter blog. All the supplies are available at ellenhudson.com, and thanks for watching.